Hey guys, what's happening? So, I got this lathe truck on an off rub score um, yesterday. And, uh, well, it originally was from an off rub score when I got the lathe. Um, but then the guy actually found this in the garage. I came back and picked it up. But, um, actually, I'm kind of stoked about that because I was actually going to go out and buy a four jaw truck. Uh, what's weird is I knew the guy had a four jaw truck because I got, there was a, well, I didn't know for sure, but um, there was a separate, separate like lathe truck key for a different, like a bigger truck. So I knew at some point the guy had a bigger truck. So yeah, I got a big haul of uh, stuff. Made a video about it, but let me show you the lathe real fast. It goes on. So that's the lathe right there. It's a Craftsman Atlas 12 uh, incher. Um, I did a restore videos, a couple of like a restore series on that thing a while back. But yeah, the thing all works perfectly. I just uh, I wanted it basically do some like uh, square material so that definitely is going to be pretty cool having that lathe truck. Uh, so here it's actually the lathe truck key. This is the one I originally he actually, it came with the original haul uh, in the boxes because it came with, I got the lathe that was, had boxes of stuff. Really cool stuff but it's an independent truck so if you're not familiar with lathes, um, this allows you to do like, you can either like, you can put a circular piece of material off center um, or you can put square material in there. Um, Pretty cool having the independents. So they should be numbered. I have to grab that, but this is, it's a, I don't know if I mentioned this is a Craftsman uh, lathe truck. So I don't know if this is a, this is obviously that's a Craftsman lathe. This is a Craftsman, but I don't know if these were a separate thing that came with the, the lathe or if it was a separate order. Um, it just seems like a pretty big lathe or a big truck for that lathe. I mean, even though it is 12 inch. Um, haul it out on the inside so yeah I just want to go through this thing and clean it up you know I'm soaking some vinegar and salt get a little rust off degrease it the same thing I did like the other one I, I restored the other truck um, so like I said I should be numbered um, yeah one right here so you just got to make sure you get them back in the right orientation so I'm hoping this one's number two they're in the right order really shouldn't I probably shouldn't make a difference with the four draw though because they're independent, but I want to keep trying to keep them in order though. So, probably the background noise. I'm 3D printing some stuff. Um, I'm, I'm guessing you just can screw right out of the, the back here. Yeah, these are pretty expensive. I looked online. These are like they sell for like two to four hundred dollars on eBay. Yeah, like I said, this is sort of a big chuck for that. So, you know, not very. I mean, it's only one and a half inch thread. Okay, so this is a separate part. Like I said, I've never actually messed with one of these checks before, so I don't know what's... Hopefully this is lettered with the number one. If there's, there, if there's no number on it, then it probably doesn't matter. It shouldn't actually matter, because they're, you have to adjust them independently anyways. I don't know, this is obviously not, not as complicated as a school truck. I mean, it's really nothing to it. Um, this is really just going to be a before and after video, I guess, of the, of the salt and vinegar, how gut works. Yeah, it's, it's incredible how good it. I mean, my other lathe truck looks like it's almost new. Um, so what's interesting here about this back plate is it's, the threads are part of the front front side of the thing. They have four screws like in the front, but it's almost just like a spacer plate. You know, I, I feel like the threads are a different part of the system. You know, like you have that thread plate right there. But the threads are built into this part. I don't think this, there's a center part that comes out. You know, I'll scratch it to see if there is, but... Um, you notice the whole threaded part comes out, and I, don't, I can't see it. But maybe it does, I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe it does. Yeah, once I degrease it, I'll be able to know for sure. But one of the things you want to do is you want to make sure you degrease any of this stuff before you put it in salt and vinegar. Because the oil will keep the salt and vinegar off of it. So I'm right, I think this thing actually is removable here. The insert. So the more once I clean it off, I can see that it's actually like a separate part that goes all the way up through the, so the threading. That makes sense too because um, you could use this chuck with multiple different like uh, lay sizes, like th different thread pitches, different you know, like this is an inch and a half, so you can maybe do like two and a quarter. Yeah, different lay the with the spindle nose diameters. All right, so I'm gonna put a witness mark on here. This probably is not so important for this type of truck, just because it's, um, you know, it's not a scroll truck. 
that actually has to line. That was probably machined inside of a thing. Um, but I'm going to do that just so I know exactly where to put them back. Uh, that way it still hopefully stays concentric as, as much as possible. Got the four screws out. Kind of rusty. Yeah, the guy lived in San Pedro, so that's kind of close. I live in Costa Mesa. And uh, so we both kind of live in like in the ocean breeze. So we definitely get the protect stuff down here because it'll get rusty in two seconds. Um, just because we get the salt air in the ocean. So yeah, it's definitely no good for electronics. <laughs> you should see my servers that are down here. Like they become rusty, like all the metal and like the the PCBs become green, like the the, the um, all the different electronics, you know. Yeah, so this is kind of why I wanted to get it apart. Even though I mean, I probably didn't need to do that, but you know, I want to get all that rust out of there. You know. So yeah, I want to. Once I soaked this, I didn't want vinegar getting trapped in there. Like once I soaked it, I didn't want water and vinegar getting there. So. All right. I mean, actually, look. I said the thing. It looks really good, in condition. So, just some minor rust, and that's it. Like I said, it's not a scroll chuck, so you don't have a lot going on. We just have four individual screws and and the the, the jaws, I guess. Yeah, uh, so even just buffing it actually made it look pretty good. But I'm still gonna dip it in the uh, vinegar because I'm not gonna get into the micro pores. You know, yeah, it's gonna look okay, but I want to get inside the micro pores and get rid of the rust there. Because if you leave the mic the pores, you know, with rust in there, it's just gonna rust real fast again. You know, like the other lathe chuck I did, you know, months ago. And uh, it having, it hasn't, I don't even see a hint of rust anywhere on it. So, All right, so uh, yeah, I did a couple different degreasings on that thing. That's actually what I'm using. I'm using the super clean, the purple stuff. Um, all right, so I'm going to put it in the bucket and put some vinegar on it. All right, so I usually have, uh, I'm just using basic store vinegar here. Usually what you want to do is I have the best luck when you completely submerge it. I'm going to move that down right there. I got another gallon with me. But I want to completely submerge it. I'm actually going to use this vinegar for a lot of different things I got to remove from us dump. Yeah, so I'm also going to use that vinegar on that that chuck right there. This one when I had, it had was all covered in paint. Put of things right there. That spindexer. Um, and also this uh, this vise here. But uh, I'm going to make a separate video about this cool vise. You know, what I was saying earlier is that even though you actually you buff it out, you can get it clean. You can see where I was kind of buffing it here. But there's still micropores of rust in there, right? So it's almost like it comes back as cancer. It's like it comes back and comes back, and so if you don't get all the pores out, it's just going to come back. Even though you can't see it, right? And it looks like it's silver or, or clean. Um, it just will keep on coming back. So um, yeah, that's why I actually like if I'm a, I, I want it to last, then I'll deep soak in vinegar, you know, get rid of all the rust. So even if you, before you're going to paint metal, I mean, I typically if I want a good good long lasting thing, I'll either sandblast it. In the sandblasting cabinet, or I'll do the uh, what's it called? Uh, put in vinegar. Okay, so I have it covered. And after a few hours, the thing will start fizzling and bubbling. But uh, what I like to do is keep it totally submerged because I've actually had it where you, when you when you didn't have it totally submerged, uh, it would start rusting where it wasn't submerged. Um, but you can already start to see it bub bubble and fizzle right here. Um, yeah, this is actually one of the things I buffed. But, you know, like I said, you also want to dip it, so... Alright, I'm going to let this sit for a couple days. Come back. Put a cover on it. Yeah, it will fizzle away for a couple days, and this thing is incredible how, how good it works. Alright, so I just want to give you an example of what I was talking about earlier. So, what I was saying is that, um, even though it actually looked like it was silver, like I had polished it with my buffer, my wire wheel, um, you know, once I put it in vinegar, then you can see where it actually started pulling all the rust out from the pores. Um, but I think it just comes right off the... So this has only been an hour, but it, it almost like it pulls the rest out of out of the pores. All right, so this has been soaking overnight here. All right, so I gotta take that lid off and we'll take a look at it, see what it looks like. I know with my other chuck, I had to do it over a couple day period. I'd scrape it with the wire brush, and I'll show you that. Um, and I'd come back, and uh, you know, I made it to go like four or five days, you know, to get all the rest off. Um, but this one doesn't have nearly as much rust as the other one did. You can still see it bubbling. Um, yeah, the light's not good right here. It's much better outside, but this thing is heavy. I don't want to put it back outside again. Let me grab this thing real fast. 
All right, see that right there? Dark color, that should just come right off. But I want to make sure I get all that stuff out of those pores. All right, so I'm going to go to the sink and I'll hit it with a stainless steel brush. You can really see how it gets covered co with my oxidized layer. All right, so I'm mainly worried about the back part here. I'm going to flip this over. So I'm going to take this over to the sink. The other parts are done. The other most of the smaller stuff's done. Yeah, sometimes you have to go get the rust off, come back, dip it again. Alright, yeah, just using the steel brush. I don't want to do that, you know. Can't do this just sit on top of my. But it's amazing how much will come off. And then the next round, this thing will be perfect. Okay, yeah, this one I think I'm going to soak again more into back in that thing because it seems a little dark in there, if you can see that. I mean, it could just be carbon, but I feel like there's some pores. I want to get all that rust out of there because, like I said, it will come back. I want it to come back. It's been sitting for a couple days. So, periodically, I've been going out to try to get some of the rust off, but I'm going to this back up and take a look at it. Yeah, pretty filmy. So, I don't know if I mentioned this. I mean, since it's been a couple days since I made the other video, but you don't, you don't want to have an exposed metal because the exposed metal will rust. You want to keep this totally submerged. Alright. Yeah, I wanna this was the side that actually had the pinning. Oh yeah, looking good. Look at that. I think this part's done. Alright, so I'm gonna take it over to my sink and then uh, get one final clean, then I'm gonna throw it in some oil. Alright, so once you get the water off, you wanna put that in the oil right away. Um yeah, obviously you want to get the water off because the oil will keep the water on if you dip it when it's, when it's wet. So I'm not going to let it sun dry because I don't want it to flash rust, but like air dry. Because the, the salt air down here at the beach will flash for us a second and a half a second. I guess that's probably good enough. Get that in there. That is some dirty oil. Get that all soaked up. Yeah, I'm on my hands. I think I should. Alright. So let's get the, the main truck part out here. Alright. Alright. The bottom actually had more rust on it. Get rid of all this stuff out. It's actually pretty heavy. It's hard for me to hold it, but. Alright, I'm gonna go over to the light. Well, I guess we can get like that. A couple. I mean, a lot of this stuff just needs to be brushed off, but I think I'm good with that. A little discoloring, but that's just it's just on the surface with there. So Scotch Bright is awesome for getting the do the file polish. Look at that. See? It's all that. It's almost like it's carbon residue. Alright, I'm gonna submerge this in oil at least as much as I can. There's actually a really a lot, of, a lot of good uses for old motor oil. I use it for a lot of things. I don't know this holds port back in that jug right there. All right, cool. All right, so I just took out of the oil. Let it soak for a day or so. Um, yeah, I just want to get that oil really into those pores. Let's let this thing soak for a couple of days. Oil. Something that I noticed there was actually pitting. Sometimes like under the rush, you just can't see it. But when you do it in the vinegar, you can. It will open up all those pores. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a face. And there's no rust anywhere. So. I'm probably not going to clean the oil up 100% in there because I want that to be kind of like, once I get this enclosed, so now you can see my witness marks better. Looks like that. Match them up, and we'll flip them over, get the screws in. And then, back like that. Make sure holes are lined up. Get the holes lined up. 
screws. Yeah, I didn't see any numbers. Even though they're numbered on the, on the chuck itself, I didn't see ever see any numbers on here anywhere. So I guess I'm assuming it doesn't matter what order goes and do. But it doesn't, I mean, it seems like it wouldn't make any sense because it's, they're all independently adjustable, so. Let's just fit back in like that. Screw in. Do the other three. All right, I think it looks pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously the price is great. I mean, I use, use motor oil only about four or five dollars worth of vinegar. So, yeah, I don't think, I mean, a, a vapor rust is like pretty expensive, like 20 dollars for a bottle or more. But the vinegar does the exact same thing. So, it gets right into those pores. All right, so, yeah, nice and dirty oil, you know. Really carbonized oil in there, so. Uh, yeah, all the things I've done with the vinegar so far have lasted a long time without flash resting or, you know, eventually the oil will dry, you know. But because I got so deep into those pores that there's no rust to come to the surface again, so. All right, cool.